Yo, what's up? Josh here. This is the Meta Quest Pro. It's Meta's newest, latest and greatest VR headset and delivers the best experience of what Meta imagines the metaverse to be. Now, most of us actually have no idea what the metaverse even is. What do you even do in the metaverse? What's the purpose of the metaverse? So welcome to Metaverse 101, where I'll be talking about the past, how the metaverse sort of came to be, the present, where we're at now with the tech and the future, where it's headed. So buckle up, this is gonna be an exciting one. So the idea of virtual reality or VR has actually been around for quite some time with companies like Sega, Nintendo, and Sony all sort of dipping their toes into this idea of immersing their users into their games. So rather than playing the game, you're actually in the game. In 1991, Sega announced the Sega VR, which was essentially a fully fledged VR headset with head tracking, 30 hertz display, and stereoscopic vision to add depth to the visuals. However, despite their best efforts, the Sega VR never actually left the prototype stage. But the Sega VR1, the bigger brother to the VR, was actually a real thing, and it did make it to certain demos and theme parks. And I gotta say, I'm honestly pretty impressed at how similar the experience looks when compared to today's headsets. I actually found a video of a reporter covering the subject, and he pretty much predicted the future. Listen to this. Today, VR is still still in its infancy. But as computers grow more powerful, the graphics more detailed, and the sensations more human, virtual reality will force us to ask, what is real? What is real? Pretty deep question. Soon after, Nintendo released the Nintendo Virtual Boy in 1995, which actually did make it to consumers' hands. People went out and bought this, but was unfortunately a huge flop due to the awkward form factor, which made it difficult to use, and the two-tone display only showing the color red and black, which definitely fatigued people's eyes. Not to mention that it was a stationary experience, meaning that there was no head tracking involved, which meant that it was more of a head-mounted display more than anything, so... Yeah, I don't know if that one actually counts. Now, it really wasn't until 2012, a whole 16 years later, where a small company named Oculus started prototyping and raising money for a device you've probably heard of before, the Oculus Rift. My name is Paul Merlucky, and I'm a virtual reality enthusiast and the designer of the Rift. What we're doing at Oculus is trying to create the world's best virtual reality headset designed very specifically for gaming. And all of this hype and all of this attention sort of caught the eye of a very young entrepreneur, Mark Zuckerberg. And then just two years later in 2014, Oculus was acquired by Facebook for an astounding $2 billion. That's a lot of money. Then two years after that, the Oculus Rift was finally released to the public and this device was truly next gen with HD graphics, some nice controllers, head tracking, and gamers all around were pretty stoked. But Mark didn't intend for it to just stop at gaming. No, Mark saw much more potential in this tech. What Mark saw was, well, the metaverse a new way for users to interact with one another and with Facebook primarily being a social platform, it now had some implications for the future of VR. You know, I've seen this trajectory in technology where we keep on getting more immersive and natural ways to express ourselves. When I started Facebook in 2004, it was mostly text. Then we got phones with cameras and it, it you know, the internet became a lot more visual. Then, you know, over the last several years, the main way that we express ourselves is video, but that's not the end of the line. I, I think we're gonna end up having a more immersive experience. So the question is, what set of technologies do you need to build to enable that? So yeah, Mark started building his idea of the metaverse. Now, before we get too far, I wanna go back to the question of what is the metaverse? So the metaverse is defined as any virtual world where users can interact with other users. Sounds pretty broad, right? But that's the beauty of the metaverse is that it's not clearly defined and any company that wants to tackle this thing sort of has to interpret it their own way so yeah different companies will have different experiences for the metaverse and as time goes on we'll start to see that shift and change now in the vr headset world there's basically two types of headsets currently. There's the ones that are more gaming focused. Typically they have to be tethered to a high performing gaming PC via a cable. And the Oculus Rift was one of those headsets. But obviously with this type of headset, there's a huge problem. Not everybody has a high performance gaming PC. And so from an accessibility standpoint, it was a little bit limiting. Enter the Oculus Quest series. Oculus Quest is an all-in-one VR system. 
completely free and immersed. You can forget about wires, PCs, and phones. Oculus Quest is ready to play when you are. So the Oculus Quest and the Quest 2, now known as the MetaQuest 2, didn't have to be tethered to a PC. They were standalone devices, which meant wireless freedom, but more importantly, accessibility. This type of headset obviously appealed to more people and the Quest 2 was a huge success. And with the pandemic in full swing, you bet that more and more people were starting to become open to this idea of this digital life. YouTubers started making content about the metaverse. Ever heard of it? And even VR specific channels started popping up here and there, which sort of brings us to present day. The metaverse is still a work in progress, but it's slowly becoming a thing. And with the announcement of the Quest Pro, which is more work focused, we're now starting to see glimpses of what the metaverse could potentially bring to our lives, which brings us to the next section. So here we are in present day. With the popularity of VR growing pretty steadily, you might be wondering what do people actually do in VR? So the use cases for VR can basically be summed up into three buckets. First being work, second being gaming, and third, being social. So let's start with work. In a world dominated by Zoom calls and remote workers, what does VR bring to the table? Meta Horizon Workrooms is an app made by Meta where people can either call in using their regular webcams and show up as a floating video feed or throw on a compatible headset and meet up in person in VR. And I got to try this with my friend Sam and I gotta say, it felt oddly natural. It really felt like Sam was right there next to me. We were able to share our screens right on a blackboard, and more importantly, we could see each other's body language, talk with our hands, and with the Quest Pro, even see each other's facial expressions. And I think all of this sort of goes into what Mark calls the sense of presence. We're really focused on the potential of VR and AR to deliver this authentic sense of presence. The magic of VR, for people who have experienced this, it basically immediately convinces your mind that you are present in another place and with the people who are there. No other technology can do this. And I gotta agree with Mark here in that there's no other technology that can do this right now. And the truth is the tech does capture that sense of presence pretty well. Now within this app, Workrooms, you also have your own space where you can mirror your personal computer in VR and use your computer as you would in real life. And the most powerful tool here has to be the ability to generate multiple monitors. And yeah, getting work done in this environment has honestly been pretty amazing. For anything with heavy computer work like video editing to something as simple as writing the script for this video, having three monitors wherever you go is Pretty sweet. And then there's the whole gaming side of things. So you might have seen videos of Beat Saber, which is this music based game where you have to slice these blocks coming at you with these lightsaber looking things in your hands. Then there's also Super Hot, where the entire goal of the game is to escape the level by defeating these red dudes, either with your fists or any weapon the environment provides you. Poker also feels pretty surreal in VR because you can literally talk to your opponents, observe their body language, and Everything from the way you interact with your chips to the way you interact with your cards just felt very natural and real. And then of course, you can also hook up the headset to your computer to get access to even more games. I was able to try Assetto Corsa in VR and it really did feel like I was driving a race car on a track. So yeah, all I can say is gaming VR is pretty incredible and totally immersive and is definitely gonna attract more users as they discover how awesome it really can be. But then there's the whole social side of things, hanging out with friends, meeting strangers and exploring the world around you. And certain apps do it better than others. For example, VR chat is a pretty popular social app, but somehow it's been overrun with kids and can be a pretty chaotic experience. Meta has also created their own social app called Meta Horizon Worlds, which is a bit less chaotic with people actually resembling people. And then there's also these people called community guides, which are real people paid and employed by Meta who exist in the metaverse as moderators, keeping it a safe environment. And yeah, it's honestly pretty fun going around and meeting people and talking to people. And I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of other games and use cases for VR, but for now, I'd say the three main buckets are, yeah, working, gaming, and the social stuff. Which brings me to the third section, and I think the question we're all wondering, What is the future of VR? So to summarize the future of VR, I've come up with the three C's. Competition, concerns, and choice. 
So first up, competition. There are already tons and tons of VR headsets on the market right now that you can choose from. And as time goes on, this competition is only gonna ramp up with bigger players like Apple entering the market soon. Naturally, we'll start to see other companies takes on the metaverse and what it really should be. And of course, the tech is gonna get better, smaller, and more immersive. I think we can also expect to see some other peripherals pop up like haptic gloves and omnidirectional treadmills. That all will be ramping up in the next few years and it's gonna be pretty exciting. Which brings me to the second C, which is concerns. So this whole idea of the metaverse is a concern for people, right? It's all been popularized by mainstream media and shows like Black Mirror and movies like WALL-E and Ready Player One. This idea of humans no longer going outside to experience the world, but rather sitting on their butts in VR 24 seven. And it is scary as much as people might be scoffing at the idea of the metaverse even existing right now. The truth is, and in my honest opinion, that the metaverse might actually sneak up on us and that transition might be so subtle that we won't even notice until it's too late. Just think about how smartphones and social media have sort of taken over our lives. Yeah, it took maybe a decade for companies to iterate and iterate on the tech and the platforms, but eventually before we knew it, we we're spending five, six, seven hours on our smartphones a day. So yes, I do think that the metaverse is a real concern. And as the tech gets better and better, there's no question in my mind that some power users are gonna end up spending more time in VR than out of VR, which brings me to the last C, choice. You know, the good news in all of this is that as consumers and the owners to our bodies, we sort of have the ultimate choice. We ultimately make the decision of how much time we spend in the metaverse, whether we even opt in or opt out. So while many of us may not even care about the metaverse, the truth is that this tech is important and we should care. So maybe share this video with your friend, form your opinions and leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more tech content. My name is Josh and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.